All right, everybody, welcome back to The Good Hustle, episode seven. John Henry. Zach Williamson. We have a super special guest today. Um, I know this is a podcast that started as real estate. It started as inviting different guests about different hustles. Yep. This is another athlete, so we're not a sports only. Don't think that. But this is a really, really, really special guest. So this is a young, young lady that's local. Yes. Mm -hmm. She went to East Pensboro High School. She played basketball. And she didn't know what was going to happen in her life, correct? Correct. Okay. <laughs> yes. So none of us do. I'm yeah. still 44. I'm trying to figure it out. I know exactly what's going to happen in my life. John. You do. He yeah. does. I know exactly. For you. He's, not, <laughs> For you. he's not the norm, though. That's not the norm. I'm <laughs> but I'm 44. I have no idea. But one thing that I've learned over the last year, it's really important to me, is understand that when we're doing stuff in our lives, we should be trying to build a legacy. Mm -hmm. um, there should be a legacy behind our name one way or another. Michael McCavitch, who's sitting across from me, is a boys basketball coach at East Pensboro, head coach for JV, and she's a varsity assistant coach. Yes. Yep. Mike Lynn doesn't know this yet, but she is building a legacy for her name that she doesn't even understand yet. Yep. She's uh, pioneering women <laughs> locally. She's doing things that four years ago would we have thought this was going to happen? No, of course not. Yeah. No. I mean, we're talking about names like um, the girl from the Spurs. Yeah, Becky, Becky Hammond. Hammond. Yep. Okay. This is wait, what wait, it's a big name. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but your yeah. name falls in line with that. Yeah. So you have a coach. What's her name? Alyssa Nakin. Yeah. Do you know who that is? MLB, right? MLB yeah. coach. Yes. Yeah. And they, so they both, um, for context, they both became full, the first full time women in men's sports in 2020. So this is correct. This is all very recent. And when Nakin did it, she was the first ever female coach to be on field as yeah. a third base coach. I didn't know that. Yes. Wow. I have a. Uh, top Snell card. I bought this the second it happened. You're putting me in a category with that. Hundred <laughs> percent. I mean, you, you're being, honored. You're being, honored. You're being put in a category where you belong. Whether it's local, yeah. national, okay. international, yeah. the things that you're doing and pioneering, and the legacy you're giving your name to start off, it's legit. Yeah. It really is. And to me, the th I just can't get over it. like your parents, your mom. I mean, how proud she is of you. And you may not even fully understand that either. Is got to be one of the coolest things in the world. It really is. Yeah, they they both are extremely proud. Yeah. Well, why don't you give us a little bit of your background, like where you grew up, all that kind of stuff. Let's start with a little bit of that. So I grew up in the area. So I grew up um, Camp Hill, PA. So I went to West Creek, which is East Pensboro Township. Yeah. Went to East Penn all through middle school, high school. Always playing basketball. Always with my brothers. Constantly outside doing all that fun stuff. And then I went to DeSales University, played ball there. Then I went to East Stroudsburg University, was a graduate assistant, and I graduated with my master's. Got into sales for a little bit, and now, oh, nice. yes. So I was in sales for about a couple years. You joined us for a little while. Yes, 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 I was yeah, in the, the sales. sales is strong. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The sales, yeah. So, um, and then I ended up at the Navy base as a contract specialist. Yep. So that's a quick overview so let's talk about like high school basketball career mm -hmm. so you played at east penn i did yes. you played varsity for how many years i was a swing player for my freshman year i played jv and varsity so i, I lettered for my freshman year and then played sophomore through senior year also another amazing accomplishment lettering your freshman year that's really cool yeah. so then let's talk about a little bit like you finish off your high school career mm -hmm. what was it like looking for the right college how did that go it, you know, it's tough because I wanted to go on and, and play. And Coach Rector, Coach Fred Rector, who's the head women's coach at the Sales Basketball or at the Sales University, he was interested. And it also helped that my cousin worked at the Sales. Mm -hmm. And when I went to go visit and meet the team, it just felt like home. So mm -hmm. and the girls were awesome. And the, the court was like an old school feel. It's a little bit smaller. Mm -hmm. And I love that. So, And also the big thing was it was um, Jack and Jill Suites. And it wasn't okay. a community bathroom, so that's oh. really kind of what sold me. Yeah. Uh, I, you know, it's funny. A lot of kids are like, you know, I chose the school because of the actually where I was going to sleep. Yeah. yeah. It, it's yep. huge. It's huge. I wasn't really it's fond. underrated part yeah. of picking a school. Exactly. I mean, it helped that my cousin was there. I had family there. I still, I'm close with her, still close with her. And then just the whole basketball aspect as well. Okay. That's how I chose to sales. Yeah. yeah. I like so, home. So, John, let me know that you have you have two older brothers, right? Yes. So, can, can you explain a little bit about how it was kind of getting toughened up by your uh, two older brothers? <laughs> I will. So, Mike is my oldest. He's 44, about to be 45. I will say, out of all three of us, he's probably the best basketball player. 
Oh, really? really? Yes, yes. So he's about to be 45, and he can still run with the best of them. Really? Um, he, he ran my team over when he came to Open Gym. So. Wow. That's awesome. Yeah, so he's in the National Guard. The Army team wanted him, but um, mm. he didn't have the chance, or he didn't want to play at the time. Wow. So, that's West Point. Yeah. Uh, is it? Yeah, I guess. Army? Yeah. yeah Army, or was it the Army travel team? Is it that Army that could have been a different team. As well. Yeah. Okay, yeah. that might have been different. So, because yes. when he was in Iraq, that's all he did was play ball. Right, and then right. when he came back, I, mean, I don't think it was West Point. No, it would have been like been. the travel Army team. Gotcha. Like, we want you. And sure. he just had a baby girl, so uh, it just didn't work out. So, he, his, um, he was fast. <laughs> Driving to the basket, so he tried to instill that in me. In me, you know, okay. going to top me up with my ball handling. So it was like a slasher. Yes. Okay. Yes, and then you have my middle brother Alex, who's 38, and he um he was like a football star pretty much, and he was brute balls to the wall. <laughs> you know, heart of a line. He will have every single rebound, and he tried to instill that in me also. So just trying to top me up, getting through the paint, you know, pushing me around, and also you know he then bullied me because yeah, you know, your sister, but also. You know, two bodyguards. Yeah, my best 100%. friends. They're my very, very best friends, my biggest supporters. And, you know, I tried to take all their qualities and then I ended up being a three point shooter. So it's amazing. Oh, nice. Good yes. <laughs> so, so it sounds I like shoot. all of you guys were pretty, pretty active growing up. Yes. Okay. Yes, we were. So it was, it was fun. Definitely growing up with two older brothers and my biggest supporters. And, you know, so when I think gave me the sense of humor I have today. <laughs> yeah, I will admit I've gotten to know Mike Lynn a little bit uh, recently, and she's hilarious. She <laughs> reminds me of a female version of me. So, um, but anyway, it's a little scary. It is. It's, it's, it's actually, terrifying. But that comes from your brothers. It's probably. a good sense of humor, I think. It's it is fun, a very it's good sense of humor. It's fun to laugh at yourself. It's fun to you know. So, things. so before we met on Sunday, mm -hmm. your mom gave you some advice. What did she tell you before we met? Before meeting you, she said, tone down the sarcasm. <laughs> uh, not everyone understands your humor That's because I am sarcastic a lot. I like to make jokes and, you know, not everyone gets it, which is OK. Yeah, yeah, and she okay. said, tone it down. Because you, you really haven't met him yet. Like, you just don't know. So <laughs> exactly. that was. Yeah. That's pretty so, ironic because that, that's like the total opposite uh -huh. of what I would give people with, uh -huh. with John. Yes. And then I realized when I first met you, it was like, it was oh like, my gosh. So. Yeah, we're, we're like identical. So, yeah, right. so now let me piggyback off that. Sorry. Let's talk about, because I, I know the answer to this, but, um, you know, growing up, you were obviously athletic. You played a lot of sports. Mm -hmm. You were running from your brothers all the time. You had to go into all their games, doing your own Seriously, games. Seriously, yes. Yep. So that's what, how you grew up. Mm hmm. You know, your love for sports was at a young age, but who's been your biggest inspiration through your childhood and, and now through adulthood? So I have actually have three. Okay. So I'm a grandfather okay. my pop. He passed away in 2017, but he, you know, moved out 16. He was in the boxing world. He became a professional boxer. He worked at PPNL for all of his life, never missed a day. Um, he ended up becoming the president of the Mid-Atlantic Boxing gloves wow. boxing yes yeah, so that's pretty huge that is huge he coached at the 1996 u.s olympics he was the what? he was the olympic boxing coach yeah so yeah. i saw like the head coach no I, he was just part of this he was a yeah, well, assistant right. coach matter. it's still he was still an olympic doesn't matter it's huge so i have yeah. all this swag from that's yeah. amazing it's only that was the, you know where that was atlanta yeah, right yes that was atlanta so yeah. but his just heart and how you do anything for anyone and i really looked up to him and he was you know um he was always there for me anything yeah. i needed constantly there his his work ethic you just couldn't beat it so he's yeah. one of my inspirations for sure he huge because pp and l worker he climbed the poles that's that's yeah, a he tough was a lineman game. oh he was a yeah, lineman lineman yes wow retired from there and then kept on with boxing refereeing right. coaching mm -hmm. and then he was at everything he was at everything for me yeah anything i ever needed so that was my guy i really miss him so yeah, i can tell yeah I, that was my guy um and then my second inspiration is my mom. Mm. So she has gone gone through it. She survived ovarian cancer when she was 21, which wow. you don't really hear of. She had stage three. So wow, she, especially because that's 21. Yes, so that was like in the 80s. Yeah. yeah so Ooh. huge fighter there. And then when I was 16, I think 2009, she survived her first brain aneurysm. Wow. Mm -hmm. Man. So that's huge. She has, uh, I want to say coils. They coiled her the first time. So that was big. And then 2014, she had another brain aneurysm that they oh caught gosh. in time before it was about to rupture. And she has um, stents. So she's a fighter. Yeah. So I look up to her for just inspiration just to keep going and because keep if fighting. She can do it, like, if she can do it, you know. Especially with our first world problems. Yeah. yeah. Like, you yeah. know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I look at her every day and I'm like, you're a walking miracle. Right. You know what I, I mean? So, so. Yeah. and then, you know, she gets her scans and she still has stuff they're watching but other than that 
it's good. That's yeah. awesome. And then my last inspiration would be my dad. Yeah. Um, always there for me. You know, he he was this, he worked as a crane operator at the steel mill for 45 years. Yeah, you did tell me that. Yeah, so pretty much never missed a day of work. He even went to work with, a, like, a broken arm, not what? realizing he <laughs> broke it. And, you know, it's just that That's generation. A yeah, it's tough guy. Yeah. But from the moment I could have a ball in my hands, I did. You know, they took me to all my brother's stuff, all my, um, both brothers, both basketball games, everything like that. But the moment I could have a ball in my hand, he was working with me till the moment my career ended. We're up at Adams or Key Park. That's where I learned to shoot. And those double rims. Oh, yeah. So if you the can double, shoot there. If you can shoot oh a double rim, you can do you anything. You can shoot anywhere. But if anyone who's not in the basketball, double rims are like. It's, it's, it's yes. It's and you have to switch it every There's time. There's no gift. So, Nothing. Yeah, yeah. So those three in my corner were huge. But yeah, my dad was with me every single day. Maybe we'd take off a Sunday. Maybe we were up at the court just working yeah. and working and working and just trying to, you know, get better. So. And it's really cool when I hear this because I love, because we've asked this question to pretty much every guest we've had about who their inspirations are. Yeah. And so many have basically just all taught, talked about their their parents and their grandparents. It's, yeah. Because yeah, it's a diff whole different generation that it is now. Yeah, it yeah. really like, is. They didn't have phones or internet back then, and now right. we do, and we're so connected. Back, and, yeah. you know, and they had this, like, heart and hustle, and, you know, you have to get to work. And yeah, and I don't remember. Make, you know, make a living. You know, you have to do it. Yeah. And they had that grind, I should say. Yeah, because when I was a kid, we didn't have iPad. We had like the original Atari. Mm -hmm. oh, I showed. Oh, actually, I showed. <laughs> I showed our last guest, uh, Alex. I showed him what the graphics looked like on that. Oh. I, I, I've seen it. It's, it is. It's, like, not, he's, it's not the best. He's like, actually, I would actually enjoy playing that. I was like, yeah, it was pretty fun. This is Centipede. This is the worst game ever, but it was amazing. Duck Hunt? Did you have Duck Hunt? Duck Hunt was like legit. Duck, Duck Hunt was awesome. Duck Hunt was amazing. <laughs> I played Duck Hunt. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, that that's great. Solid. Or on the Nokia phone, what was it? Oh, Snake? Yeah. Oh, yes. Snake, yeah. yeah Snake. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> it doesn't age any of us. No. But, um, <laughs> and by the way, if you're enjoying this episode of the Good Hustle Podcast, please go ahead like the video, subscribe, and also, if you need any real estate help here in central Pennsylvania, John and I would love to help you. You know, ultimately, the things that you're talking about is just, it's really great for you to have that growing mm -hmm. up, to have that push, that drive, but it isn't just given to you where you're like, hey, you know, a parent pushes you and that's exactly what you do. You have to have, want to have it in your own heart as well. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And yes. you did. I did, yes. I wanted to go up to the court with my brothers and my brother, er, my brothers and my dad. Like, cause if you don't want to, you're just going to end up resenting the yeah. sport. No, I yeah. wanted to, I wanted to work on my yeah. craft and everything like that. So you have to have the love for it. Right. Yeah, you do. Or you end up hating it. Yeah, so. for sure. So was, I'm guessing basketball was always your favorite sport growing yes. up? Yes. Okay. Yeah. That was it. Yeah, yeah. I did play soccer for a little bit until I hit high school and then I just slowly focused. Well, I guess I would say I focused on basketball. It was very serious my whole entire life. I started playing AU okay. when I was in seventh grade and then really started to hone in on it. I did run track my junior and senior year of high school. Which is really a great thing to do in the spring. Yeah. I, I wish I would have done it all four years. Yeah. Why not stay active? Well, you're active and it's a huge social event. So Exactly. Yeah. yeah. It, it is. It, and that's the thing like that I think is a is not the best thing in sports today for youth is mm -hmm. that they focus on one sport. They play it 24-7. Yeah. I so, all the time. I'm constantly. Yeah. So, and to me, like I played three sports and- I think that my muscles and the things I could do with my body, mm -hmm. like the way my knees could react to certain, like your knees don't do the same thing in basketball that they do in football. No, right. not at all. I actually talked to Alex about that when he was on the podcast about using his frame to just kind of go through people. Which oh is, my! You know, if you play basketball year round, you can't do that. So as as you know, we play against Steel High. And yes. He, yes. He's very tough to guard because he, yes. he's a brute. Yeah. yeah he's, he's very he's smart. smart. He's smart all around yeah, athletic. He's literally a quarterback on the court. Yeah. yeah, and it's like, what are we going to do with him? But <laughs> right. so. yeah, but I see yeah. that. But so I want to talk about how I think we were friends on Facebook. I don't know. I think we were too. I don't know. Somehow, how. Maybe. probably because of the real estate team I bought or something mm -hmm. like that. But yeah. I will say, like about two or three weeks ago, and it was sometime in January. You had put a post on, and I didn't know who you were. I didn't know anything about you. You had put a post on that Penn Live had written an article about you, yes. and I was like, holy cow. This is a woman coaching boys basketball locally. Mm -hmm. In my brain, I'm like, Zach, I found another guest. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, yeah. who is it? We text each other all the time now about different interesting people in the area. Yeah. And you were one of the people that we were. That's awesome. Like, you, Thank you. You popped up on both of our radars. It was because, mm -hmm. like I said before, the thing that you're doing is something that's not been done locally. And it is pioneering. And Thank it you. is building a legacy. Yeah. Thank you. And, but at the same time, Penn Live posted some things that weren't exactly <laughs> correct. So why don't you 
tell us a little bit about that article and possible sure. correction. Sure. I do want to shout out Penn Live. They, it was an awesome. It's awesome. Article. Awesome. Yes. Right, phenomenal. Right Nothing wrong with Penn Live. Beautiful. <laughs> you know, opportunity. I also want to thank you guys for having me on here. This is of an amazing course, opportunity. Yeah. N- never thought I'd be on a podcast. So I always <laughs> well, listen to them. But yeah. So um, Penn Live did get a few things wrong. Um, number one, they said I was a star, um, and I wouldn't say I was the sole star. So my four years. Everyone on that team was a star that made East Penn who they were. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. we all had our jobs, what we had to do. And without yeah. one certain person, we would have fell apart. Mm-hmm. So I would say, you know, the year we won the division, which they also got wrong. They said 2011. We won it in 2009. Not, right. Okay. Yes. So that was a very good team. And each one of those girls on that team was a star. Right. That made us the team who we were to grind through and win the division. So... So I wanted to correct this. And also, the last correction, they said I hold the all-time three-point record at, this, I almost said the sales, at East Pennsboro. <laughs> um, I only hold the girls' record at East Pennsboro. I'm not sure who holds the boys. So I just you said to... they were talking, some of the people you knew were talking a little smack about that. Yes, yes. <laughs> After the article came out. A little bit, yeah. So I was like, no, I definitely hold the girls. I'm not sure who holds the boys. So <laughs> right. yeah, I just wanted to point that out, a little correction corner there. And yeah. shout out to my four years at East Penn, all those girls who I played yeah. with. They made the team That's that we awesome. were. So. so what's it like now coaching the team that you played for? I mean, that, that has to be such a like, interesting being back at east time capsule exactly so it's it's i wish i could go back and do a few things differently i like have a whole new four years but obviously i can't so it's great being back where i grew up um in the community and kind of instilling in these kids like what i've learned and bringing these knowledge and bring my knowledge in and hopefully they gain some of my knowledge and you know learn a little bit from my coaching so it's nice to give back to where i grew up yeah. And to come through East Penn again, and hopefully maybe win another division, win a district title, yeah. go on, go on there. The things that I didn't get to do. So, yeah, and I spoke about that. Like when I played sports, my dad was a great coach. Mm-hmm. I've also had bad coaches growing up. Oh yeah, <laughs> and I probably oh, yeah. remember them more than I remember the good ones. Mm-hmm. Right. But at the same time, what the good coaches instilled in me as a person are going to last longer than what the bad ones did. Exactly. Yeah. So you know, for me, opportunities knocked. I was. Uh, 31, and I got an opportunity to coach, assistant coach, a kindergarten team. Oh, greatest thing in the world. So I was like, I'm going to move up. Next year, I'm like a head coach. Oh, yeah. And then within like four years, I'm coaching two middle school teams and then helping with other teams. So I've been coaching for 13 years. And the reason I really wanted to start coaching was because I knew what it was like to have a really good coach. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yes. And it was like the most, it was the biggest blessing mm-hmm. to have great coaches. Yes. Absolutely. So I didn't tell her I was coming to one of her games. Yeah. So yes. I show up. I didn't get there till the second half because I was working. Um, I get in, sneak in. She doesn't see that I'm sitting there. I park behind the bench. And um, No, you snuck in. You did sneak in. I snuck in. I, <laughs> yeah. did, I did. And I'm like three rows behind her. Mm-hmm. And the first thing I see is the kids get off the bench. Mm-hmm. And one had um, uh, passed gas and she had to yell at them and <laughs> it, so you're coaching boys okay, i am coaching boys high school boys high school boys yeah uh, so how that in mind it's way different than high school girls because right? i've coached I'm middle sure. school girls high school girls college girls and you know there's drama you know, yeah all of you above i'm a girl so i get yep, it but right. boys is a whole different animal oh, so yes, yes they did they are, yeah. pass gas and i was like guys come on it's exactly <laughs> i was like come on said, she, and no one would admit to it and i was hoping maybe you know they let out that that's the energy they needed. I think I might have said that. I said, right. use that as energy. Yeah. Yeah, fuel. Yes, fuel. And this know? is, she didn't know me. She didn't know I was sitting there. And I'm like dying, laughing yeah. to myself. But at that exact time, I could literally tell, A, they respected you. Mm-hmm. And B, they listened to you. It mm-hmm. isn't like you're just out there yelling. You're coaching. Yes. And you have the respect of these young men already. Because I've coached middle school girls. Greatest coaching experience of my life in uh, 2017. Okay. Two middle school girls teams. Girls coach... Boys coach girl sports all the time. Yes. That's they do. all the time. It's just, yeah. It does. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So sitting across from you and like knowing what you're doing is so much bigger than anything that I did <laughs> yeah. is really, really cool. Um, boys are gross. Uh, <laughs> boys are gross. Boys are gross. Like boys are gross. Yeah. But and, uh, it's, it's been a lot of fun. So that that was a funny time. I think it, I think we were losing at the time and I think it put some light. It did. You know, it 
light in the air. And I said, you just use this. I'm like, we're all laughing. I'm like, put something in the air. Yeah, put something in the air. That's a good one. Put something in the air. So that's not the first time they've done that to me. So yeah, yeah. And no one will own up to it. But that's my team. I would do anything for them. Right. Yeah. uh, Go down to the depths with them. So. So you went. So you went from from playing at East Penn, yes, uh, into playing at DeSales, which you know me and John love making DeSales around here. Yeah, yeah. Okay. real estate. Again, favorite there joke. You go. Of the there day. you go. Yeah. <laughs> Terrible. Oh, yeah. Terrible. I, I kind of like it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but um, so, can you tell us a little bit about why you chose to go to DeSales? Mm, for definitely for basketball. Um, oh, the academic scholarship. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. I uh, received an academic academic, academic scholarship. Uh, DeSales just felt like home. I was meeting the girls and Coach Fred Rector. He's a well-known coach, and just kind of going into his program was awesome. And he accepted yeah. me. You know, he wanted me there and everything like that. So that's huge. And then um, just it just felt like home. And also, yeah. my cousin was there. So and it feels good to be wanted. It it feels great to be wanted. And then yeah. once you go, and then once I started at the sales, it was just it's amazing to be on the basketball team to yeah. have that sisterhood and to you know, just grow with the team. So. Yeah, I'm jealous because I wanted to play college ball, and I actually went to a, a D3 school too. Um, but we, uh, yeah, I was never, I was never good enough, and my grades were never good enough to make the team. So I'm a little jealous. <laughs> did have to hold, that. yes, we did have to hold a certain grade point average. Yeah, that was the hard part for me in the beginning. <laughs> so. yeah. At 2.0, didn't cut it. Did yeah, and, uh, yeah, they didn't like my, they didn't like my high school grades, unfortunately. <laughs> um, okay. But yeah. <laughs> so, um, what was your favorite part about playing college ball at the sales? Like, do you have any any certain memories or any cool moments that that you kind of cling back to, and you're like, man, that was like a really good one? Um, I think you know, just being a part of the team, like I said, just building that sisterhood because you're with them twenty four seven for six out of the nine months you're there. Because basketball is the longest but shortest season it is. you go through. Because yeah. you start, you're like, here we go. You're tired, you're exhausted, and all of a sudden you blink and it's over. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And in those four years were over like that yeah um but i think the best part you know because we, we we didn't really have a christmas break so we had five days at home and then we would come back and have pretty much the whole campus to ourselves so all we do is focus on basketball and we'd have team sleepovers and watch lifetime or watch whatever was on you know what i mean just do what girls do of course yeah, yeah the bachelor and then hang out with the boys team and you kind of just ha- build that huge bond that you really wouldn't get anywhere else so yeah that's a big time yeah and you're still close with these girls i am yes that's awesome yeah with so it's awesome. Just, so so in college, mm-hmm. do you remember what the most points you scored was in a game? 20 points against Kings. Oh, I yeah, was a junior. A, yes, yes, that's exactly right. Junior, yes. 20 points we against... learned that one on Google too. Yep. Yes, yes. yes. The Google machine is very wise. <laughs> yes. I had a very good three-point shooting game that, oh, nice. that day. So yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah that, was, that, was, that was my top game. So now, was, was any family at that game? Yes, both my parents. I, nice. One, of, maybe my oldest brother was there. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. And maybe my uncle was there. But that's my cool. parents came to everything, except the very far away games on like a Wednesday. Right. It right. didn't matter on Saturday. We could be going four hours away. They're coming. That's but Wednesday, cool. if it was at um, Misericordia or Manningville, mm-hmm. it was. They're not. You know, they both had to work. So. Yeah. But if it was a home game, they were there. That's pretty neat. Mm-hmm. That's Once awesome. again, it's that support. It's that support that not all of us get. Yes. Yeah. 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 And that instills a lot of hustle in you, which is pretty cool. Yes. Um, another thing I learned about you is in you had you had another Penn Live article from twenty fourteen. Yes. So this is like a ten year old article at this point. I can't, um, oh my god. Yeah. Don't say Can that. Can you believe that? <laughs> no, I, know. I feel like I just graduated college. I know. Like, right? I, no, yeah. don't say yeah, that. Yeah, it sneaks up on you fast. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Twenty fourteen being like ten years ago. Is pretty Stop. Cool. Yeah. Um but I learned that you um, dealt with a lot of injuries I did, uh, back yes. in the day. Um, and I am someone who I, I threw my back out like five times. And so it's... I've had a really bad back my whole life. And um, it started while I was in high school basketball. Welcome to um, the club. Yeah. Yeah. So I was going to ask you, can you tell us a little bit about your injuries and kind of how that played a role in your, in your Sure. Career? It actually started my senior year of high school. I tore my TFCC ligament, my shooting hand. Ooh. So going into my senior year, I had to have that surgery. Um, recovered from that, and then I came to my freshman year of college, played that whole season, retore everything. I oh. tore that again, and I tore two other things. So I had a nice green cast on for postseason. <laughs> yeah. And then my sophomore year, this was the big one. This was when I hurt my back. Um, you know, beginning of the season, we have uh, preseason open gyms. Yeah. I just fell wrong, mm-hmm. thinking nothing of it, and I was like, oh, my back really hurts. Yeah. So we got a CAT scan early on, and they did show a little bit of like a bulging disc, but I just went to the chiropractor thinking yeah put it back in no big deal right well it got worse and worse and worse you know <sighs> to the point where 
you know, leaned over. I, I call it like, you know, the back walk. Yeah. And yeah. like until you yeah. warmed up, you didn't straighten up. So like I couldn't like sit, stand, walk. Yeah. Still decided to play. I was like, I'm fine. <laughs> you know, and then at the end of the season, we finally got MRI and it showed my L4, L5 disc was completely crushing, bulging my sciatic nerve. Ooh. So that's why I was having this terrible pain. Like I could barely do anything. Yeah. So I had that removed and I woke up completely out of pain. I'm like, oh my God, I'm good to go. And then he's like, hold on, give yourself at least six months. You <laughs> yes. know what I mean? I mean, my parents even sat me down and said, do you still want to continue playing? Because this is huge. Yeah. And I was 20 at the time. And I was like, yeah, of course. Right. Yeah, I'm young. Like, I'm fine. Yeah. So. Rub some dirt on it. Yeah, rub some dirt. Pretty much rub some dirt on <laughs> exactly. it. Yeah. And yeah. I played in a summer tournament going back into my junior year. And I went up for like a layup and got knocked down. And mm. I, I realized I was okay. I was like, oh, I can go. I can play my junior year. Mm. Um, so that was my sophomore year. And then my end of my junior year, I had a bulging hernia in my groin so I had to get that taken care of so I don't think I had any postseason yeah ever because we do postseason workouts right. and open gyms Jeez. and then um I was good in my senior year I didn't have any surgeries after that or anything I graduated okay nice. so but then eventually I had to receive a um L4 L5 spinal fusion yeah because the rest of that, that disc decided just to so how, how do you feel now like how is it standing on the sideline for an entire game and then um, doing it another one right after. So it depends on the shoes. Okay. Okay. Um, <laughs> if I wanted to be comfortable, I would be in my Asics. There you go. But shout out Asics. <laughs> it's not how you feel; it's how you look. A hundred percent. So That's when I'm true. coaching, when I'm JV, I'm so the adrenaline takes over, so I really don't feel, feel anything. Right. Yeah, yeah, I'm you know screaming at the kids, please box out, run the play, I drew up. <laughs> yeah. You know, but also encouragement. I, I my coaching style is like optimistic and encouragement. That's but, how I am. And then yeah. for varsity, I'm sitting most of the game, so it's not too bad. That's but right. it, then after it's it kind of kicks in a little bit mm. you know just that sciatic and everything yeah. but knock on wood it could have been much more worse yeah. yes. you know what i mean like i'm blessed to be able to walk run yeah. do everything again i just have to be careful that's how i look at it too yeah yeah because yeah, so, i had i had triple hernia surgery two years ago oh well no there was four they thought there was three okay and then i have i've had major disc issues l5 um s1 yes. has yeah. been my issue since i was probably 18 but I did lose some weight last year and I have not had like any pain. That's good. Yeah. That's good. That's so, good. yeah. And I haven't had to see the chiropractor or anybody, but I kind of wanted to uh, kind of go back and talk about mm -hmm. some inspirational women like Becky Hammond. Yeah. yeah. So 2020, she's brought in the San Antonio Spurs and she is literally the first woman to coach in professional sports. Full time, yeah. Full time, full time, correct. correct. Yep. When that happened, was it on your radar and did you ever think you would be in a position where you were going to start coaching at all? Because I know you started coaching. We can kind of go back. Mm -hmm. I know you wanted to talk about East Strasburg. Yes. So let me go back to that a little bit okay. and move forward to this. Okay. So start with East Strasburg. Yeah, sure. sure. So I was a graduate assistant at East Strasburg. Um, my friend Marla Simmons, I played AU with her and she played at Bloomsburg. She coached under um, Diane Decker. She was assistant coach at the time. And if you want to talk about star, Marla was a star, all American. She was great. She can also sing. So there's that. Yeah, really? that's, that's unfair. Yes, yeah, she, she can also sing. <laughs> this is not, um, that's so not, that's she, not fair. Diane yeah, Decker <laughs> ended up taking the head job at East Stroudsburg University and brought Marla on as an assistant coach. Um, this was her second year. We were Marla and I were out. She said, "Hey, we need a graduate assistant. Do you want to nice. want to come?" I was like, "Yeah," <laughs> you know, because I was able to coach and get my master's. Right. So really, I owe all of this, my coaching inspiration really opening my eyes to coaching to Marla and to Coach Diane Decker. Because Marla, cool. you know, um, pitched me to Coach Diane and then Coach brought me on. So just having those two really open my eyes to the coaching world, it was amazing. Because yeah, I never, I never thought I'd really get back into it because, you know, you're 20. Like when you're done playing basketball, you yeah. felt like it was over. Yes. I was 23 at the time or 20, I think I'd seen yeah, 23, 24, and I was like, eh. You're like, oh, time to get a real time job. Time to get a job, yes. Yeah. I was working as a secretary at the time, and she, she's like, why don't you come be a graduate assistant? And I was like, that sounds awesome. Right. So best two years of my life, I would say. Yeah. And at the coach, I went to class once a week because it was a master program, and I ended up making, you know, really good friends, and I ended up coaching, which I was some of the best. So Diane Decker was an amazing coach. I learned a lot from her. I learned a lot from Marla and all the assistant coaches there, so... Yeah, I does, really owe a lot does, of gratitude to them. Yeah, how does it feel to look back and think, "Wow, they saw something in me that I didn't see in myself"? Like, I, do you ever think about that? 
no, not really. No. <laughs> but it's something like yeah. I would look back and man, like, man, because there's so many people that gave myself and, and like, yeah. you know, him yeah. being a youth pastor, like the yeah. people that gave us these mm-hmm. opportunities for me to do things like just uh, Jill Layman. She said, hey, do you want to work the hot dog stand? Why well, work the hot dog stand? Well, then the next year I'm coaching. And that just opened up a door. Exactly. Uh, for me so to coach. now since you brought that up, it's like, wow. Like Marla and I are very good friends and she wanted me to be there with her right. and experience the coaching world. So I was like, oh, now that you that you pointed out, I, you, know, you never really look at, yeah. look at it until someone points it out that way. And then yeah. with Coach Diane Decker giving me that opportunity. And I still talk to her this day. I yeah. can call her for anything. Same with Coach uh, Richter. They've yeah. been in my corner since the very beginning. Like I call them for recommendations, literally anything. So I can't thank them enough for. Yeah. So now that you've been on Pen Live yes. and you've been on the Good Hustle podcast, the, the, the best, good, yes, the best podcast in the game. It's very. Good. Um, is, it, <laughs> is it starting to hit you now that you are kind of uh, pioneering and, and kind of opening some eyes to, um, you know, what coaching could look like? Um, you know, in the future and, 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 you know, like kind of how we're moving forward. Yes. Yes, it has. I've had um, a few people come up to me and say, this is awesome what you're doing. Yeah. So we had no idea until we read the pen live. Cause I don't really post so much about it. I mean, I do, we have game days, like on my Instagram stories, but you don't. That's how you, I found out. Yeah. And yeah, people just kind of like, you know, click through until they read the story. They're like, oh, oh my goodness, you're coaching boys. Yeah. I was like, yes, yes. Yeah. And they're like, how's that? Like, right. Is, is that even possible? Is that possible? Like, yeah. aren't you nervous? Aren't you scared? Like, you know, all the, all the, all the above. And so that really brought that to my attention. I'm like, wow, maybe I am doing a little bit something here for the community and everything like that. So, yeah. and actually, I saw a post you, a quote from you the other day that you had posted about people didn't think you were a coach last year. No, what did they think you were? They thought I was a trainer. Yeah. <laughs> yes. And how a did it make you feel like really like? Did you have negative thoughts about that? And was it great to be like, no, I'm a coach? Like, how great was it to like, not to be rude, but to correct them and say, actually, no, I'm not the trainer. Uh, so really felt, it felt great telling them like, hey, I'm the coach because it made me feel very encouraged. But yeah. also I have a few friends who are athletic trainers, so I give them all the respect. Oh, 100%. Thank goodness I'm not the athletic trainer. Yes. Right. Thank goodness. Because <laughs> the they would come up to me like, hey, are you a trainer? And I'm thinking, why are they asking me this? Yeah. And then I realized I'm the only girl in the gym yeah. as of right now. You know when you arrive early, it's just the boys. Right. And right. I said, oh. So that makes sense. I said, but no, I'm actually the coach. And they're like, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. Like, that's amazing. You know, blah, 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 blah. But thank goodness I'm not the trainer. Yeah. I could barely wrap an ankle. So (laughs) yeah, but it made me feel like, yeah, okay. You know what I mean? It kind of gave me some chip on my shirt. Yeah, think about how Becky Hammond felt. Yeah, I know. I I I can imagine. Yeah. I mean, that is just, that's inspiring. Like what he was just saying, basically like, well, go ahead with your next question. Sorry. Oh yeah, no, you're good. I was going to ask you like, what do you think, um, cause a lot of people will be like surprised that you are coaching men's and like, mm-hmm. like, Oh, well, you know, why, why doesn't she coach the women's team instead? Or like, you get, I'm sure you've had some weird, um, kind of vibes from some people. Mm-hmm. So what do you think that people misunderstand the most about, um, your position about being a coach, you know, for a men's team? That's a really great question. Um, so when I first started, so this is my first year having my own head, like I was head JV coach right? and being a female, the refs and the other coaches kind of. They're like, oh, she's just a female. Like, you know, kind of what does she know? Mm. So even going in last year, I kind of had to set my dominance with these kids because I was nervous. I yeah. Are they going to respect me? Right. And then finally they realized like, oh, she does kind of know what she talks about. So I owe a lot of gratitude to Brandon Rao. So shout out to Coach Brandon Rao for bringing me on and giving me this amazing opportunity, which opened up all these doors. But, yeah. you know, how, being a head coach this year, the refs wouldn't listen to me. I'd be like, hey, what was that about? And just ignore me. So this year? Yes, this year, oh. because I was, you know, head coach and I could, or head JV coach and I could question yeah. the refs yeah. and they would just blow me off. But finally, um, you know, my one friend who is a uh, college coach and she said, start asking them questions about the call, kind of like yeah. question their call. So I started doing that. And I actually they, saw you do this. Yeah. So I was like, so I started doing that and they started responding to me mm. and sometimes they couldn't answer or sometimes they'll say, coach, I didn't see it. Or sometimes sure. they'll be like. Yeah. Like, go away. <laughs> go away, pretty much, yeah. Because I was always in their ear. And sometimes they wouldn't even turn in to look at me. So you have to, like, set that dominance. Like, yeah. I, then, I almost feel like, like, maybe you feel this way too, but I almost feel like you have to overcompensate 
and put him yes. and more aggressive mm-hmm. because a lot of men, if they were standing on the sideline and they asked the ref something and they knew they were the head coach and they had the clipboard and all that stuff, they would just immediately respond or, or yes. like they're used to that, right? Yes. But it yes. feels like almost you, you have to almost go like do twice as much. Over and as, beyond. Like I've actually yeah. yelled. Yeah. Yeah. Do you feel like that? Yes, I did. I did. Yeah. This year I did. Um, it, it was tough at the beginning of the year, like the first round with all the refs and trying to get calls and having them explain because sure. you're just you know, pushed me aside. And the second year, finally, they realized, oh, she kind of knows what she's doing. Right, right. She knows ball. (laughs) She knows ball. My JV team, you know, took a turn for the corner. We started winning games and playing as a team and really doing well. And so refs started responding to me by asking questions. Right. And, you know. And it's it's how you talk to them, too. It's also how you talk to them. Yeah. Now, when you coached that game that I went and saw, Mm -hmm. A, the kids definitely respected you and they acted like a team. Yes. And they were having fun out there. Yeah. They lost that game, but they were still having a great time. That's all I want for them, yeah. It, it, it is. It's, yeah. I mean, they're not bringing home state championships in JV yet. Mm-hmm. It's it's okay. Right. Like, it's a big-time learning experience. It truly is, yes. But one thing that I saw that was really, really cool is after the game, the coach of the other team came over and you guys were talking, and you could tell he had mad respect for you. Mm-hmm. It really was cool to see. Yes. So I've, I've actually, almost every coach has come over where I talked to them beforehand, and you see the respect and just talking about basketball and everything like that. So it's really great, great to see and to yeah. talk to them. And they're like, well, how is it? Because well, they always ask me, how is it being a girl coaching boys? Right. Right. I said, it's t- don't get me wrong. It's tough. Right. Because, yeah. you know, they talk back and they're boys <laughs> and, and, they they, yeah, and they do that. <laughs> and, and it's a whole different game. And it's just a whole different game. But it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. I'm really gra- glad Brandon gave me this opportunity to coach the boys. Yeah, I think so. it's awesome. We, we did talk about that, how Coach Rao did open that door for you. She, huge door, yeah. And it's, you see, like, it's not them just opening doors for you. Mm-hmm. This is you. Mm-hmm. The things that you're doing, the way that you're impacting other people, coaches, mm-hmm. kids, that's what's getting these doors opened up for you. It's not just somebody saying, hey, come here, I got an opportunity. You've set this up for yourself. And whether it's through the inspiration from your grandfather, your mom, your dad, Mm -hmm. your hard work in high school, your hard work in college, your grad stuff, like these doors weren't just opened up for you, like, hey, just come in. They weren't. Right. So just remember, like, these doors are being opened up because of the hard work. There's been years of hard work. Dedication. Yeah. And just who you are and how impactful you are, especially locally and pioneering. I'm going to use that word a thousand times. Thank you. Yeah, you. Like those are as good as it gets. Yeah. And that's why you're on this show. Thank you. Yeah. Seriously. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I'm like speechless at that. <laughs> Seriously. Thank you. No, you're yeah. welcome. Yeah. Um, so uh, kind of coming to a close here, a big mm-hmm. thing that we always talk about, the good hustle is not just about athletics mm-hmm. or entrepreneurship or business, but it's really about, um, you know, that drive to become better, yeah. that drive to, yes. to become the best version of, um, you know, John or Zach or Mike mm-hmm. Lynn that you can become, right? So what is your advice to someone who wants to become great like you've become? Okay, that's fine. I was actually on the phone with my mom coming over here. And like you said, we went over these questions and yeah. she's like, what is your good hustle? Because she's because she also went through and we listened to all the podcasts. She listened to oh, them great. too. Really? Yes. Did she like it? Oh, she loved it. Okay. Yeah. So, so she was make so sure so, she subscribes. Yeah. I say, mom, please subscribe. Even though they use my <laughs> thanks, mom. Uh, thanks, mom. They use my, use my they use my YouTube, but um, <laughs> um, I guess what was I gonna say? Um, it's not like you said. It's not being an at an athletic or being an ath- or what am I trying to say? Not being an athlete and not being an athletic. It's kind of. I'm hoping what I bring to the table and with my knowledge with basketball that these kids know that they learn a little bit from me and they take a little bit from what they've learned from me and pass it on to their future and they become successful. And I want them to know that basketball is always a place for them to escape because right now it's yeah. so it's tough. It's so tough for kids. It is. It's absolutely. It's so, I couldn't imagine being a kid right now. No, especially with social media and everything yeah. like that. And I want them to understand that with me being their coach or being a past coach, they still have that opportunity to come into the co- basketball or come into the court. Or come, what am I trying to say? Come into the gym. My goodness, I'm a little nervous. <laughs> and, you know, awesome. get their frustrations out. And I want them to have a place to feel like at, at home and they can just let their expressions go and just right. kind of leave everything in the past and just focus on basketball and have fun. Have a place to escape. Yeah, and a brotherhood. So, right. A brotherhood, yeah. So that's kind of what I'm hoping to to bring on and everything like that. I don't know if I answered your actual question. Oh no, you're good. Yeah, I, yeah. No, I I think that's great. Actually, basketball yeah. has been a huge escape for me. I was actually in the gym this morning, just trying to like you know get some 
blow off some steam and, and hang out and listen to music and just like um I, I think also there's you know there's a you know scientific part of it too like mm-hmm. releasing doing there is whatever you yeah exercise. there is and, yeah it, that's, um, it's very true yeah, yeah and, and a lot of people don't get that these days no, no you, and you, when i got you know not to talk about me but when i got sober like a lot of people in sobriety they go to the gym yeah. they work out they run yeah. they do this i did that at first and now i, I don't do nothing but uh, <laughs> but i did play basketball for a while and i still i really need to go get back into it because it is literally like an absolute love of mine as well. Yes. Like I loved playing all sports, but yeah. playing basketball was always my There's favorite. something about it. Yeah, I it can't is. really pinpoint what it is. It's addicting. Hearing the shoes on Sque- the court. Um, oh, yeah. Squeaking. It's like something something about it. It, there is, but I think sometimes I practice, they, they would squeak on purpose. Oh, 100%. <laughs> I really do. No, I don't like the, eh, yeah. can't oh. stand that noise oh. at all. But anyway, <laughs> so I did, I did want to, you know, wrap this up. Mm-hmm. A couple of things I wanted to finish with. So, um, Trent said that in third and fourth grade, you were his first girlfriend and it was his first kiss. Yes. Is that the same for you? Is that true? Yes. It is true? Yeah. <laughs> oh, we're going to take that back to the top of later. <laughs> I did not know that. That's so funny. He actually texted me yesterday. He said, are you going on the podcast? I said, I am. No way. Yeah. <laughs> That's so funny. Yeah. So you said third grade. Third or fourth grade. Oh, third or fourth grade. I think it was a like kiss on the cheek. Let's not. Wow. And and yeah, he's yeah. and he still um, has not matured at all since then. <laughs> oh really? Neither, <laughs> neither have I. No. Um, <laughs> great guy, great family. So. Yep. Yep. Um, but on a serious note, mm-hmm. like, what do you think the next five years? Like, where do you think that this role could lead you? Like, do you think? Like in my head, I'm like, oh, she's going to be the sales boys head coach, or she's going to coach East Lynchburg, or my gosh, she might be the Warriors coach. But like, ultimately. Let's say you get the job as the varsity coach someday at East Pensboro. Like, mm-hmm. how amazing would that be for you? Like, what is your plan? Like, what are your thoughts? That would be amazing. Else? So, actually, the head, the men's coaches at DeSales and East Strasbo are, are very good coaches. And I don't know if I could ever fill their shoes. Right. Scott Koval, he is sure. um, the coach at DeSales and um, the coach at East Strasbourg. I think he just got his, oh, my God, what was it? 300th win? Wow. It's either Boy. that or... I think it's 300 or 400, but anyways, um, both very great coaches. So I don't know if I'd want to fill those shoes, but <laughs> so five years from now, I, it's a hard question to answer because I don't know. Yeah. Um, it would be awesome to be a head coach, a head varsity coach. It's also a lot of work, oh, yeah. but right now I'm really happy where I am with Brandon. Right. And if he keeps me on, hopefully we keep going the next five years. I think that'd be awesome. Yeah. And if he goes somewhere else, I think I would probably follow him. And so yeah. I don't, I don't know. Because, like, five years ago, ten years ago, I'm a whole different person than what I was. Oh, yeah. It's insane. Like, you look back ten years ago, I was in college, yeah. you know? And five years ago, I was, what was five years ago? Well, you're- 2019, I guess I'm going Pre-COVID. You're, Pre-COVID, so yeah. I was in sales. Oh, yeah. yeah. You're 29, right? So, well, thirty. Yeah, 29 yeah. forever. Yeah, yeah, 29, tw- 29 forever. Yes, yes, <laughs> 29 yes, forever. yes. Um, I can tell you, when I was your age, mm-hmm. a totally different person. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. So totally different person. But yeah. I think one thing that we've learned today for sure, and we, we knew it going in, is that no matter what, like you're going to keep those doors open and you're going to hustle and you're going to get somewhere cool. Of, and of course. Yeah. yeah. Always going to keep the doors open. If the doors keep opening, I'm yep. going to keep going through them. And yeah. Yeah. So. Well, we want to we want to thank thank you so much for being a part of the show. If you ever need some type of inspiration or understanding, keep your eyes open or just your eye. Um, keep your <laughs> eye open. And look for those doors that are being opened for you and take a leap. Because yeah. if anybody did, Mike Lynn really did. Truly, truly, yeah. Took I was leap. terrified last year walking in. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but look at look at what you're doing for this community That's and for true. women, especially mm-hmm. young women right now. Yeah. It, yeah. So hopefully when you say young women, hopefully they see my story, read the Penn Live article and say, oh my gosh, I can do that too. Yeah. You know, even young, younger men or younger right. boys, like that, that they can also grow up and be a coach and, you know, follow their dreams in some sort of way. So, so the biggest lesson I learned and is just when those doors open, take a leap. Yeah. She did it. She's a pioneer and we're just extremely happy that we had you on the good hustle. So thank you so much for coming on. Thank you. Thank you yeah. for having me. It's yeah. an amazing opportunity. No, it was a really good yeah. conversation. Thank you. It. Yeah. I appreciate you guys. Yeah. Keep up your hustle. <laughs>